Hey man, I want to do something with the aim characters, but I feel like it maybe been done to death already. I'm just having a hard time figuring out what kind of video I should make. Oh well, I guess I'll just aim to entertain. What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with kind of a tips, tricks, suggestions on how to use AIM post-rework. Now, there was a couple of big changes made to AIM, plus we got a new character, so I'm just going to do a quick review, nothing too crazy on their kits, and kind of give you a little bit of heads up of how to use the minions, how to use them with some of the characters, and where some of those characters gain a little bit of extra value. Starting off with AIM Assaulter. AIM Assaulter didn't get much of a change. Basic still functions the exact same way it used to, where just the tax puts a stack of bleed. Special, a little different. If Aim Assaulter has a debuff, it multi attacks, one bonus attack for every debuff on its target, and its passive gives speed bar to itself on turn, as well as adjacent aim minions. Also gets a little bit of damage. Security, takedown, basic attack, does great. Uh, if the character happens to be ability block, and the character being in security, it does way more damage. The special has an AoE heal attached to it that heals itself and adjacent aim allies for a pretty decent chunk, and clears speed up, making sure that they're taunting and taunting for a long time. And the passive immunization, whenever attacked, if Scientist Supreme is present, an ally, if it's above 75% health, she transfers one negative effect from self and every aim ally onto the enemy that attacks him. Really good at clearing off some of those pesky debuffs that stuck around. Also gains max health and resistance. Pretty good for a tank. Next we have aim researcher. The basic is roughly the same as it was before. Decent attack damage and a chance to put offense down on the target. Nothing crazy there. Surgery Drone got a little bit of a change. It heals the lowest health ally and the adjacent minions to that ally. It also has a chance to flip bleed stacks. And Antidote, on turn, has a chance to just give any random ally one random positive effect from a huge list as opposed to the normal three, offense up, defense up, speed up. It also gives regeneration, death proof, and deflect. If the ally is aim, apply two random positive effects. All in all, Solid all-around healer. Aim Infector next. Some slight changes to the kit. Puncture works very similarly to how it used to, where it attacks the primary target for a decent chunk of damage, but transfers all negative effects on Aim Infector to the other target. Biohazard, very similar to Shocker Special, increases the character's speed bar, heals self, and has a chance to give the adjacent aim minions counter in addition to itself that chance becomes a sure thing as you invest pretty solid upgrade really helps uh, the aim synergy work and metabolism gets a little silly now on turn the character gives themselves one random negative effect for two turns plus a passive speed and max health boost but also on turn if they have offense down they gain two stacks of offense up defense down pretty much the same three speed up etc so the character really contributes their own debuffs to their own success. That's going to lead us to the last aim minion, aim monstrosity. Many people probably already had him as maxed out because he was from the blitz store. One of the biggest reworks. Uh, the primary attack hasn't changed too much. Bash is basic. Still going to attack the primary target for a decent chunk of damage with a chance of applying defense down now. All in all, solid attack. Pretty similar to America Chavez. The special got a huge buff. In the past, the special just gave himself offense up, healed a little bit, and passed the turn. Now, Sudden Evolution attacks the target, then gives himself offense up, and the two adjacent aim allies get offense up for two to three turns. <laughs> it also can't miss. Might be able to be dodged, but it cannot miss, so blind them all you want. There is one downside to his kit, maybe, depending on how you use him, and that is that he spawns with defense down for two turns, and on turn he has a 100% chance to heal 10% of his health. 
Keep in mind, when I review characters, I always review them at level 65, gear tier 10, 6664. So even though some of my characters don't meet those metrics, I have looked at the information and asked around from friends to make sure that everything does line up with what I'm saying now. So now we'll talk about the marquee characters, the named characters, the guys who take some work. We're going to lead off with Graviton because Gravy Boy has a lot to say. One of the most interesting kits, uh, works very well with aim and without. Just take a quick look at what he does. You've probably seen other kit videos, so I don't want to spend too much time on him, but he's a villain, bile, global controller, really solid kit. His basic attacks the primary target and gains an additional bonus attack for every negative effect on the character. Uh, machine gun style, it doesn't make one attack, it makes multiple attacks. His special is Quake's basic, an AoE slow that increases the amount of slow stacks on the character. And if Scientist Supreme is present, puts a bleed stack on them. Really, really great debuff. Singularity is his ultimate, ready on turn one, attack primary target for 250 plus 100% additional damage. That functions more like Vulture's basic, where it's one big hit and applies stun. And last, we have his passive, very interesting passive whenever a character drops below a hit point margin they gain plus one on all of their debuffs aim minions uh, on your side of the field gain max damage and max health and really interesting text and one of the first characters uh, to have this just in war in general not war offense not war defense not a many characters have that but just in war when he takes a turn he reduces the speed bar of whatever enemy or opponent has the highest speed by 25%. And in war, whenever an enemy drops below 75% health, they also gain Disrupted. Great on both sides of the war, defense and offense. All in all, very great character. Great with aim, great without aim. And we'll get a little bit more into that after. And then the last part of this kit review, we're going to talk about Scientist Supreme. Got a pretty strong buff is no longer situational at best, now is situational but has a home. We'll start with her basic, decent attack damage, and proc two random negative effects to the primary target. We're not going to be using this one too often because of her next abilities, but it's always great to have a constant debuffer or a, a wizard, a mage ability, like your Scarlet Witch, your Mordo on basic. So pretty solid all in all. No major changes. Field Trials, interesting change. It flips three negative effects into positive effects for all allies, applies two regeneration to anyone with the aim tag, including herself, and increases the duration of all positive effects on herself and all aim allies by one up to a maximum of three. So she gives out buffs, she makes debuffs buffs, and she extends them afterwards. Solid ability all around. And the one that got the most important change is Retro Vaccination. Heals all allies, nothing changed there. Apply two to three random negative effects to all enemies and all non-aim allies. So if she's on a full aim team, or at least a partial aim team, you're not gimping the rest of your team. There are some cons and pros that come with that, but it's still way better and gives her a lot more usability both on the aim team and outside if you're just using her with graviton or such well we'll get into that in a second she also gains 25 percent focus per aim ally so on the aim team no one is going to resist all of those debuffs really 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 solid just just a great way to open a fight even if you don't need the heals to make sure that there's offense down defense down and slow on your opponents really great and that's that's it for the quick review of their kits i want to get into a conversation about the teams so let's say you just want to use the aim minions whether it be for blitz early fight in a specialty raid i wouldn't necessarily recommend arena but definitely on an alliance war offense or defense this is the placement uh, i believe to be the best use of these characters you'll notice that the damage dealers are being buffed by the other damage dealers. You'll notice that the healers are protecting the tank and themselves with the obvious chance of being able to AOE heal the characters that are uh, taking damage that you want to protect. 
the Assaulter is receiving an offense up, the Aim Infector is receiving an offense up to make sure they have a little bit more focus for the fight. This is the, the setup I would use, uh, the placement order anyway, for just using the Aim Minions. And there's plenty of reasons to just use the Aim Minions. Uh, you may have found other uses, you may just have not unlocked another character. This is where I would go with that. It's also kind of important to note that not all of the Aim Minions only benefit the other Aim Minions. Characters like Researcher, Infector, and Assaulter don't need the rest of the aim minions around to give out either their passive buffs or whatever they're, they're throwing out, but they're clearly better with them. Where characters like Security and Monstrosity are significantly better when you use them in the team. So that's how I would use the aim minions. Moving to the next step, we'll talk about what happens with Graviton. Now if you want to use the aim team with Graviton, it's relatively simple swap. You can replace Infector, or you can replace Assaulter. And the position is a little bit different. No matter what, whomever you replace is in the middle slot, and Graviton is as far away from the damage as possible. He will be carrying the damage of your team, so you want to make sure he is the most protected. And this is how I'd use this team for Blitz, for Alliance War Defense or Offense, if these were the characters I wanted to use and these are all I had access to, not including Scientist Supreme, here's how I would throw them down. He'll still gain offense up from a monstrosity, he will still be hitting characters very hard with his basic in addition to his other attacks, and he gets enough of the buffs uh, from the rest of the characters. That said, he's not limited to the aim team. He makes the aim team stronger, much like Ronin makes the Kree, but you can get a lot of use out of him. For example, you can make him the fifth member of the Spider-Verse team after your Green Goblin has moved on. And he's going to do great. He's going to lean into the Carnage debuffs, the Venom spreaded debuffs, uh, the Spider-Man defense down, and any amount of disrupts that Miles has put on. A great addition for a team that truly didn't have a fifth at this time. Uh, he's not taking away too much from the aim. They are pretty decent without him, and you're building around a team that was missing a uh, fifth character. Uh, another option is uh, the Wizards team, <laughs> or a, kind of a modification. You still use Carnage and Venom, but now you've added Mordo and Scarlet Witch to extend all the debuffs. Gonna help him do a lot of damage when his basic comes around. Last thing I've been testing to some great success was Ant-Man, Wasp, Kingpin, Crossbones, and Graviton. Uh, you think, well, what, what does that team really do? Well, it gives you a lot of early game control. Between a potential Wasp stun, a potential Graviton stun, and an ability block from Ant-Man. You can control a lot of defense ups from characters like Luke Cage in the Defenders fight, or a stealth from a hand sentry. Really gives this team a solid all around for Blitz or for Alliance War defense. Demands kind of a, a real response from the opponent. And last, we'll talk about Scientist Supreme and how I would use her. Uh, very similar to Graviton, except when she's present, there's pretty much two different schools of thought. Not the exact same situation as Blitz and Alliance War, where they want to accomplish the same thing. On Alliance War defense, you want the most annoying, obnoxious, and hard to defeat team. So you're going to have multiple healers and multiple sources of control in the fight, giving her an opportunity to keep resing. So I would use a team setup very similar to this, uh, in which you are still doing damage among your highest damage dealers, Researcher having a pretty solid offensive uh, attack on her own, Scientist Supreme having a passive res, making sure the heal from Researcher goes to the tank and the highest damage dealer on the team, and making sure that Scientist Supreme is still giving out the effects. This is how I place this team on, on defense in any form to make sure that your opponents are, are truly, truly fighting an uphill battle among a bunch of heals with debuffs and powering through it. This is how I place this team for something like an Alliance War defense. Now, if you wanted to use this team on offense, it's functionally the same, except you just make a quick swap out from Researcher to Infector. Attacks always want to do more damage. I wouldn't necessarily use either of these like this in Raid, but if you're using it for a small fight, you want to make sure you're doing damage. The sustain isn't that important. Now, if you have all the main characters, here's where I would line up. Using Graviton, Scientist Supreme, you're always using security and aim monstrosity. And then whether you're on defense or offense, you choose researcher for the heal or assaulter for the extra damage based on defense or offense respectively. 
placement changes a hair, but nothing terrifying. It's not that imperative. You just want to make sure that you're doing the most damage with the strongest characters or sustaining the most and making sure the longevity of the fight helps you win a defensive battle. Now, what I did with Graviton, there are some other options with Scientist Supreme. You can use her and Graviton with debuffers. Now, Carnage, Venom, Scarlet Witch, Mordo. Placement again, not incredibly relevant because your team is accomplishing one task, which is kind of a nuke team. And at that point, the fifth character can be pretty much anyone. Anyone who takes advantage of debuffs, anyone who speeds up your team, anyone who just hits really hard, a tank. You know, I'm showing off a couple characters that you can use on this team. What you would need this team for? I don't know, but it's a really fun thing to do. And another thing you can do with Scientist Supreme just on her own is put her with a bunch of other tech villains. Uh, the only ones that come to mind off the top of my head are Minerva, Vulture, Ultron, if you have him, Crossbones. You can even use Vision because they're all tech characters and just kind of put up this very strange debuff and buff oriented team that has multiple threats with res chances and uh, a very strong setup. This is some kind of alliance war defense I might use, providing they're strong enough. Uh, it might throw some people off. I wouldn't necessarily use this team on a blitz. It breaks apart too many other teams. Ultron's good enough to win on his own. And if you don't have Ultron, you can absolutely still put a team like this together and just play around with it. It'll be kind of fun in blitz if they ever end up fixing blitz. So here are some ideas. Very great character redesigns, great as a team, individually good outside of their teamwork. I would recommend trying them out. I wouldn't necessarily say they are a meta team by any stretch of the imagination. However, I have had some success using them into a lot of meta teams, both in Blitz and in War, almost surprisingly. And I just used them on my last War defense. Got a lot, a lot of unnecessary value out of them. So. As far as a rework goes, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Don't feel like you need to upgrade them, but don't feel like anything you put into them is wasted. Obviously, they're ranked a little bit differently. Graviton and Scientist Supreme are a little bit higher caliber than the rest of the team, but you won't have many regrets investing in another good team for both Blitz and Alliance War. And if you do that, you'll end up happy with it. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped. I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.